Hello, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions. In this video today, I'm going to showcase the power of creating building system configurators. And specifically, I'm going to focus on creating a switchback stair tower. And uh, I've been working with the client doing training as well as setup and customization of Tecla for a fabricator that specializes in stairs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you kind of the problem that they first have. So, you know, I've trained them how to use the out of the box components. And there's quite a different uh, set of different components and settings. There's uh, different settings for the posts. Then there's different settings for the actual stair itself. And there's a lot of different tab pages and different settings and options that Tecla offers to allow variety and flexibility for customers to set up the stairs and the rails the way that they want. Now, this takes a little bit of a learning curve. And so how do you get through that hump of you know getting through all of this setup and uh, then easily just putting in the stair based on the design and the layout of the actual stair tower? Well, so what you can do is with the power of the API and custom development, which is what I provide for certain clients, um, I've actually created a switchback stair plugin. So here I've got the plan view and it only has the inputs needed that the uh, detailers for this fabricator say that they mainly care about. I've baked in all of the defaults and all of their standards for the detailed connections and their landing style, their stringer style, the nosings and everything like that. And I've built all of that into the save settings of the actual uh, components that this configurator is calling out. So you'll see here, there's the S74 uh, stair uh, component from Tecla, the 76 stanchions, the railings, etc. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how easy it is. I enter in the enclosure width, the length, I can tell it the stair width. If I leave this uh, landing empty, it'll actually default with the stair width plus an inch for extra clearance. I've got this uh, nosing to um, basically the center line of the header. And so again, this has got a lot of the standards already pre-baked for the client. Then here I've got uh, the elevations and I don't need to calculate the number of risers. I just tell it the maximum riser here, the tread length, and then I tell it the elevations of my landings. And these do not have to be equal. You, sometimes you need to kind of lay out longer um, and taller and shorter stairs within the same kind of flight and you can easily do that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say apply here and then I'll pick two points to basically define the orientation of the stair tower. Then it's asking me, hey, is there any previous stair header um, and grab rail to grab from a previous stair tower? And I'm gonna just say no. So I'll just middle mouse button. And here within about three seconds, you can see that I've got a fully detailed uh, and modeled, like again, this, is, this isn't this is just like smoke and mirrors. This is truly a fully detailed, including all of the transitions, um, you know, everything calculated, all the connections to the landing headers, um, the header modeled, all the landing pans, the landing support at the walls, everything is fully in here, even the transitions down or the um, kind of the end termination here at the bottom of the stair towards the floor. The 1043 connections have been applied at the bottom. Um, so everything in here has been created. Now everybody's like, okay, well, cool. You know, that's a simple switchback stair. But first of all, I would just say that this is pretty common. Drop in stairs um, where you just have a simple header and you try to simplify the installation of the, of the stairs, just doing a simple switchback stair. This is pretty common. Now let's take it to the next level. I'll just come in here and I'm going to say, uh, let's not create the second floor level. Uh, for the guardrail and then what we'll do is we'll just uh, change this here to 14 feet and I'll just go ahead and quickly modify So what that's going to do is it's going to just uh, get rid of that guardrail that was at the top And then it basically just stops the concrete there at that uh, level Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'll go back into that component and uh, let's just change the elevations here So let's go ahead and do a six foot and then six foot And then I'll make this uh, 12 foot here Let's just do 19 foot here because maybe there's, you know, this is going to be the actual top going up to the roof or the top level. So then we'll just say apply for that. And then what I'll do is I'll just come in here and activate the component again. And I can click right here at the middle of the stair. So that's where the input points are. And I'll just go to this next level, pick two points. And now this time I'm going to actually pick the previous header. Then I'm also going to pick the previous guardrail or the grab rail for that, uh, that uh, handrail that's coming up on the guardrail. Then I'll middle mouse button. And here again, within seconds, you can see that the next stair tower has been created. Now I'm going to redraw, and uh, on this top one, let's actually go back in here. I meant to leave this on, so let's just turn that back on and say modify. And there's our guardrail. So there we go. We got basically the returns are done. The kick plate uh, has been done here. And so what I can see is that, hey, wait a minute, something's not right here with this flight of stairs. So let me go look in the elevation view and see what's going on. Well, the thing is, is that because this is a six foot rise, um, you know, for both of these levels, 
basically, you know, an extra riser has been put in there. And so it kind of, it isn't working out exactly, uh, or sorry, a, a less of a riser has been put in there compared to the bottom level. And so the nosing points aren't lining up here. No problem. The easiest thing is I can just double click on this and I'll just increase this by one tread. So I'll just say five foot uh, here for the length of that landing and just say modify. And then there it adjusts the geometry of the stair. Now my nosings and everything are all lined up here um, at this location. And we can just say redraw. And uh, here I've got like a post mismatch because here I just had zero inch dimensions to the first post. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, double click on this one and we'll just go to elevation and we will add a negative two here to just pull that down a little bit. And that negative two is about, about halfway between the header and the nosing point, which just works out really nicely on that transition based on how this client likes to do their rail transitions here at the guardrails. And uh, there we go. Like literally within a few minutes, we've got a fully modeled detailed stair tower.